A very good afternoon and welcome back to the Touchline on Y254. My name is Max Olwasik. We're going to speak about, you know, state of Kenyan football, international football as well. You know, as at Y254, we too patriotic. We're going to start at what's happening back home. But before then, I'm lucky to be hosting two gentlemen who rallying behind a team that got thrashed last weekend on Sunday. 7-0 drabbing. And someone was wishing me happy 7th day Adventist. And good to have Ken... <laughs> And Eric, Eric, good to see you. How are you doing, man? I'm doing well. The, the last statement was unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> How is the feeling getting trounced 7 nil, man? You know, that is something that had not uh, happened to your team sometime back, several years down the line. Yeah, you, you run away from the social media for quite some time, I think two, three days. And then on the streets, everybody is telling you uh, what is the date today. I think the next day was 7th. And uh, so, so, so Leon Yasita, Yasaba and Nikesho, yeah, Yasaba and Nikesho. Uh, it wasn't, it's not easy, it was a week, yeah, uh, it wasn't easy. And uh, everybody you meet on the streets uh, asks you how many week, how many days are there in a week, <laughs> <laughs> so you have to say seven or oh, the, like the, uh, the same number of goals you received. So, uh, I think, uh, but uh, we, we, we got over it and we won, uh, yeah. Ken, uh, I think you know, Kenyans are too forgetful. And events get overshadowed by others. I'm sure, you know, in the next few or so weeks, Kenyans will have forgotten about 7 nil drabbing of United by it. Liverpool. But, you know, there is something you guys used to be proud of. 8-2, thrashing yeah. of Arsenal. I think that's and 7 nil, yeah. uh, trouncing of Roma in UEFA Champions League. Yeah. Now, you know, your past heroic exploits are getting overshadowed by whatever happened last weekend. I think if you look at those two results, at the end of those competitions, United won the trophies. But Liverpool won 7 nil, and they, they won't win anything this season. And no one will forget the throw, obviously, no one will forget. But I st I'm still confident in the United team be because they have come far, you see. They are, they are third in the Premier League. They are still in three other competitions they, with the possi possibility of winning, you know, the Europa League and the FA Cup. So, you know, I'm still confident in the team. It happened, you know, it grounded the fans. Because we were, we were, you know, we were in seventh heaven daily. You were in high spirits uh, daily. Now it, it grounded us, and we, you know, we saw where the team is. But uh, you know, there's still improvement needed. There are still, I uh, think, two big players needed. But you know, the trajectory Eric Ten Hag has taken this season. You know, the team is is in good hands. But it was nice to see him making a stylish comeback in the midweek in Europa League, yeah, beating yeah. Real Betis 4-1. That was a statement too. That, that, that and he heaped a lot of praise on Bruno Fernandes, who got, you know, uh, who got to be, you know, criticised uh, over the weekend. Over. I think over the weekend he was played out of position. If you look at uh, against Liverpool when he started, he started on uh, on the on the on the flank. Yeah. Uh, that is not his uh, his best position. He doesn't have that pace. Mm -hmm. uh, he wants to be involved in each and everything that goes around. Yeah. So he's better off either behind the strikers mm -hmm. or right at the heart of the midfield. Yeah. And uh, you saw in the, in the midweek uh, match, he was brought back to his favorite position and you saw the damage he created. Yes, yes. Uh, he was able to, to create havoc for, 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 for Real Betis. Uh, and that tells you, Maxwell, uh, a lot about the coach that, uh, 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 or the kind of person Ten Hag is. He's able to rally behind, uh, to rally the team and say, look here, we forget, that's gone. Yes. We have to give an answer, we have to give a feedback. And I think, uh, I, I saw him on the, after uh, four goals, I saw him referring, telling his players, I still need three more. So he really wanted to, mm. uh, to give the fans something to, to, to celebrate. When he was at 4-1? Uh, he, he was at 4-1, he, he kept more. on gesturing 3-3-3. Three, three, three. He wanted now three the more. seven he had, uh, he had conceded uh, over the weekend to have a kind of a revenge. And uh, that tells you the mental strength that he has been able to put in this team. You can come from three days after you've lost 7-0, seven, seven you come and win 4-1 uh, at the, at the quarterfinals or at the, uh, the knockout stages of a champ uh, Europa League. That's not a mean achievement. Yeah. And Ken, that is something we rarely get back home. You know, the Kenyan football never draw that attention. European football does when it comes to, you know, headlines. If it was mm -hmm. Gormaya playing against Bidco and probably the... Uh, newcomers in the local top tier are getting beaten 7 nil. Probably that attention wouldn't have been mouthwatering yeah. like what was witnessed when United got beaten by Liverpool. Back yeah. home, we're not following top flighters we're supposed to do. 
Yeah, I think uh, it's it's lack of visibility on TV. It's, it's a huge reason for that because not everyone actually goes to the stage. If you look at the games that have numbers in this uh, country, it's mostly just the W or FC Lopez or Gormaya matches, even though some teams actually play in within their communities, you know, three teams like Bandari, they play in Mombasa, but still, you know, they don't get that visibility. A lot of people watching them. And also, you know, um, the players here are, are not superstars. Because when you tune in to watch a Liverpool versus Man United game, you're not only tuning in because it's Man United versus Liverpool, you know, you have Rashford there, you have Varane, you know, World Cup winners, Salah, you know, big, big, big players. So you also want to see that. And we haven't been that great in advertising our players because if you think of the number of players who would attract new fans to the sport here in the, in the local scene, you know, you can hardly bear five, name five, you know. It's, that's, that's a key reason why we cannot get the same visibility and the same uh, passion people put into the European sport. And also, you know, 7-0 for Man United and whichever result across the world, I don't think... Uh, Anyone wants to see. <laughs> as long as my United beat and I know the whole world, even if the team you're playing for loses seven nil, you'll be like Manuel Tokaji. <laughs> so yeah. So Eriko, yeah. like locally I'm I'm rallying behind the slam boys of Madara United, two thousand and eight Kenya Premier League champions, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, despite being a scribe and uh, you know I will have to mm -hmm. confess the truth. Yes, yes. I've I rarely attend their games because I'm supposed to cover them, you know, write stories and mm -hmm. also enjoy their games, their games yeah. because I'm their supporter. But yes. it's something I rarely do. Uh, I think so what do we do? Is it value for your money, like uh, Ken said, because someone would argue that, you know, going at a bar to consume some frothy liquids in exchange of catching a Premier League game overseas, overseas yeah. compared to, you know, going at Nine National Stadium to watch FC Leopards against Atlanta and paying, let's say, 500 book. Mm. Ati, they won't get value for their money. I, I think uh, one, me in my personal opinion, three things. One, quality. Uh, mm -hmm. Look at that team you've talked about, Madara United. It used to have the likes of Kina Simon Mulama. Yeah. Uh, Titus Mulama. These are people who could uh, play some beautiful football. Almost everyone uh, uh, who's conquered uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. in Kenyan football uh, scene yeah, yeah. started at, came at, at came Maisa. From Maisa. You see, from an early age, it was put into them, knock the ball around, knock the ball around, enjoy. Uh, that one uh, you rarely find in Kenyan football. We have only a few teams who can be able to do that. Uh, that's the first problem, because somebody will think, why should I go and uh, get mediocrity? Uh, secondly, organization from the organizers. Uh, have you ever tried to get a ticket to go to, 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 to the game? It's a hassle. Getting the ticket itself, it's a hassle. And then thirdly, as, as, as Ken has said, has put it rightly, publicity. You see, the Premier League is advertised all over. Yeah. Everybody talks about the Premier League. And it has overshadowed the other leagues, even uh, the Bundesliga and such kind of thing, because of publicity. Publicity will bring sponsors on board. Sponsors will bring money on board. And money will be pumped into teams. So players will be paid well. Uh, players' welfare will be looked into. So you find that the Kenyan pre Premier League, the main problem, it's overshadowed by, by, by side shows that are not uh, uh, really important because we've, we've, we've refused to focus on what is really important. Yeah. We improve the quality of the game. Uh, we improve the quality of management of that. Because I remember there was a time we used to we used to go uh, floodlights to watch those games at night. Maze? Remember? Pale nyayo, yeah, pale nyayo, instead instead of getting seven, caught in eight. yeah, caught, caught in, in traffic, mm. you go and catch a game. You see, mm. uh, and we used to have double headers. Uh, a game you have a game that starts around five, another one will start at around eight. Mm. So by the time you see uh, a traffic is done. Yeah. You can drive home. You see, what if we have such kind of arrangements? Even you look at uh, in Europe, they have those, those those games that are played at night. Yeah. Uh, whereby now everybody as he leaves work, yes. you go and catch those games. Yes. Uh, so I think uh, that is what is also lacking in the in the Kenyan Premier League. Yeah. And if they can improve on that, I believe uh, uh, Kenya is one of the countries that uh, uh, loves football. Football yeah. is loved, and that's why the most of most Kenyans uh, will 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 will, will uh, have allegiance towards uh, international teams, the likes of Arsenal, the likes of Manchester United, uh, yeah, because they want they have failed to get that home, so and get it somewhere else. And that's why you'd prefer to get into a bar or a social place to catch a game. Yeah. Look at the hula behind uh, international games. You'd find that 
uh, even even us as now who are in the media, I think we should bring a lot of hype about yeah. Kenyan football. Because you we find need that to publicize, uh, to publicize it, yeah, 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 yeah. positive yeah, about yeah, it. Because uh, today, if you say uh, I, on your social media pages, you are, uh, as if you are going to Nyayo to catch a game, mm. you know, there are people you'll influence on. Which, which game is yeah, this? You yeah. know, they so they start following. But uh, uh, you'll find that us, we say, ah, Leo, man, you know, to know near happy a certain social place, people will flock there. So easy to know, and all peers not cost like ah. I have a friend of mine called Tofik Balala, former yeah. transport CEO in Mombasa County. Yeah. He was attending a game pitting Bandari mm -hmm. and Tasca, and he was complaining that you know Tasca as a host team could not provide spectator stands. Mm -hmm. Bandari had to come with their own shipping containers yeah. to improvise somewhere to yeah, yeah, yeah. you know see so that to mm -hmm. continue enjoying the game. I think those small things mm -hmm. are the one that you know drawing us back and making our Kenyan football to be retrogressive. Especially if those things, you know, are connected to the fan experience. Yeah. Because, you know, if it's your first time and you're, you're, you're forced to sit on a container, you know, that's, that knocks you out for the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. you, are, you, you look at the example of the derby at Nyayo Stadium, because, you know, most, most, many people who attended it, paying the ticket wasn't the problem. Mm -hmm. But when you get into Nyayo National Stadium and mm -hmm. you find that all the seats, you know, haven't been cleaned. Been the, the, the whole stadium, you know, that's something that really, you know, leaves you thinking. Do you really want to be here again? I think the fun experience is really poor for not only the FKF, but also the teams themselves. And also the investment in public relations should be, you know, <coughs> should, they should try to invest more in it because they never talk to the fans really about what is needed in the game. You look at teams like Gormai and FC Leopards, how many fan forums do they have? But they have all these big fans. How many of these fans, when they meet them and ask them about their experience, things change in the next game? Very, very minimal. And again, you know, we have to stick with what Erica said, the quality of football that's also on the pitch, you know. You know, you, you watch it, it's totally different from what you... You watch the Premier League your whole life and you watch KPL, you know, you, you just see a shift, a difference in it. And I think that's... That's a place that's really another place that's really shocking because if our top teams cannot play, you know, football that can compete even for at at top African level, I think we, we are still in, in big trouble, you know. Yeah. Because I think fans from a uh, paramount aspect of yeah. development of the game, when yes. they don't show up in large numbers, you know, yeah. there is no revenue, there is no gate collection, and you know, mm. even corporates. Even corporates, you know. Corporates want to associate with Numbers. With numbers. <laughs> numbers. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all about numbers. Put pesa pale, ama tuseme, 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 safaricom, ama sivi, nini, kampuni gani, nataka kuleta do, they will want to. See, what, what, what are we targeting? Numerical superiority. Numerical superiority. Yeah. Look at what is happening uh, in, in, across the, bo the border in Tanzania. Uh, in Tanzania, they've been able to rally their fans because they're organizing their games better. And that's why you find that younger Simba, it will be filled, uh, filled to capacity. Mm. E even here, nowadays, Gourmet, FC Leopards, uh, we have to rally a lot eh, yeah, to yeah, get numbers. People yeah. are no longer going to the stadium. And like before, it was a tradition. Exactly. People could just yes, show yes, up, yes, not yes, necessarily yes. getting coerced. Uh, yes, yes, yes. And, and there's something uh, my go our good friend Simon said. Uh, why would you struggle to, to, to bring Gourmet uh, the home matches to, 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 to Nairobi when it's most of its fan base, base is, is in home Kisum. there. Mm -hmm. Put their home stadium there. Why would you struggle when uh, uh, instead of having City Stadium as home ground for AFC Lopards, put those matches in Kakamega mm -hmm. and you'll see they will start singing at 10 a.m. in like, preparation like for that game in the evening mm -hmm. and they will fill Buhungo Stadium. Making Bogungu Stadium to be the venue of the clash. I know it exactly. will attract a lot of fans yes, around. Yes, yes. Around. Vijana Waka, Popale Moost. Yes. Even the locals. They the love locals, they will football. They will love to, you know, FC Identify with their own. That's their team. Yeah. And you see, long time ago, and then uh, it made sense to me. And uh, I thought, long time ago, we had those now community-based clubs. And uh, they used to be supported a lot. Eh? Now, we are not going to the community-based club. But now, if that club is loved by that community, you know, FC Leopards is associated with a lot of uh, people from yeah. Western. Yeah. Have their home ground at, let them play their matches, home matches at Bohungo. And you'll see, the quality of Buhungo will have to improve because uh, you have to make the pitch and the stadium. The, 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 the business opportunities around the stadium on that match day, uh, we, people will make more money and uh, the stadium will be filled to capacity. And then sponsors will take notice and they will support that game, that event. 
like like there is a team in Mombasa is it's participating in Mombasa Premier League yes. it's called Mvita uh, youngsters yeah. this team has been using influential figures and you know personalities who who, who attract some following to rally behind fans to show up in large numbers at the stadium. I don't know whether that is self-sustainable, but it's been working out for them. Yeah. Like you see when Bandari is playing at Baraki, yes. like hosting Gormaya, yeah. fans attending that game will be countable. And like, you know, people attending a concurrent game yeah. where Vita Youngsters is involved because, you know, our mm. celebs wame, wame yeah. social media, Twitter, nini, nini, wame yeah. chokora. Mm. So people are showing up in large. I don't know whether he, that one works for our Kenyan football overall. I think it, it does work because, you know, following is important. And if you have the numbers on social media, you, you attract more people to come and watch. And also, I think uh, for some reason, the lower leagues kind of have more <laughs> fun, bigger fan base than KPL because these tournaments that, that are away from NSL and KPL, they usually have a, a huge turnout. So I, I don't understand their... And also, I think for visibility, I think the, the, the simple thing they can start with is having proper you know pre-match uh, interviews okay. i think uh, that yes uh, i think to, to add on that you talked about something about the lower leagues yes. I, i've attended a few uh, down on the ground in car west you find that they are well managed yes uh, they are well mm. managed as compared to to to, to, the, to the higher to league the yeah. higher league there's a lot of bureaucracy mm. there are a lot of issues yeah. uh, you find that before the game is played uh, you are tossed left right and center mm. but this one there's no bureaucracy we yeah. are playing tomorrow we are playing yeah. next week against this team yeah. Uh, money for referees there yeah. provided yeah. Uh, and uh, you see football has to start uh, from the grassroots yes even mm -hmm. if you look at the Premier League uh, you'll find that uh, if it's the Masse uh, side derby you see the fans uh, the Everton fans uh, mm. they know where they come from yes and uh, they, 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 it starts from there Yes. And the rivalry has to start from down, down, down there. Yes. Uh, because if you look at, uh, I was uh, on the ground there in Kares, the rivalry between uh, gas team in Gidurai and Kares uh, team, you find that the fans want to come. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to, to come and support their team. It yes. has to start there. Yeah. And then we push it upwards. And uh, that calls, I think, uh, uh, maybe the, uh, I believe uh, there's, a, there's hope because we have a cabinet secretary now who is listening. Yeah. Uh, we have a cabinet secretary now who is engaging. I hope uh, he said that multi choice will be coming back. Yeah, yeah. And uh, when multi choice comes back, super sport comes back, I think uh, that would be a huge, huge boost. Uh, because you remember when they were here? Yeah, yeah. Uh, things were a little bit okay. Kenyan players got an opportunity to play overseas in, yes, yes, in, in yes, foreign yes, leagues yes, because yes. at least now there was visibility. Visibility, you know? yeah, visibility. People getting monitored. Uh, yes. And, and then like also nowadays we, we like playing in the dark, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sponsorship. Football is about money. Yeah. Yes. They were able to pump in some money. Mm -hmm. Whereby now for, uh, players will not go uh, for months without being paid. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there, there are teams that struggle even to honor their away matches uh, because mm -hmm. of uh, a lean budget. So you see, those, those things, we, we should be able to, 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 to put them behind us. Mm -hmm. And if uh, the players are comfortable, I am sure uh, they'll be able to concentrate more. They'll be able to play better. And uh, we'll be able to see value for our money. Yeah. And uh, now, you know, the future of Arambe stars. <laughs> you know, we've had a lot regarding our national team changing <laughs> name. <laughs> Coaches. Because I think we qualified for Africa Cup of Nations in 2019 in Egypt after 15 years of waiting. The last time we had done that was in 2004 in Tunisia. Mm. And, uh, you know, under Sebastian Minye, it was, it was a prestigious opportunity to play in continental football, though we got eliminated at the group stage. Mm, yeah. And, you know, the following... AFCON, we didn't make it. Yeah. And so is World Cup that took place in Qatar last year. Yeah. What do we do? Because, you know, we keep talking about strategies, mm -hmm. the programs in place, you know, the yeah. structures at the grassroots, you know, yeah. youth programs, getting a proper tactician, someone who understands technical aspect of the game to be in charge of the national team, you know, packaging our club football better. But, you know, the end product is... Yeah, For yeah. a fan who is at home, Mazeya yeah. and Takwoch are ambassadors. Ikiches Afco. Yeah, yeah. I think for the fan, it's really poor. Number one, and number two, we cannot forget that what Erica said. Football is it's about money. 
And you know, for all these Kenyan clubs, you know, they should uh, at least Ababu Namambo is working, but they should not get comfortable and be too dependent on the government because that's not where all yes, the money yes, comes yes. from. Mm. The corporates, you know, these are the people who can pay up up to billions, you know, to just have people see their logo on TV, see their logo being won or associated by the champions of this club. Yeah. So these teams and clubs, you know, they have to utilize the the, the the, the deal, the, the, the multi-choice deal that will be coming back. They have to write out to these corporates and give them, you know, anything they want. Sleeves, you know, have their names on shorts and try to bring in as much as they can money so, the, so that when they make something good of their season with the money they get, they can do it again next season. Because we, I don't think the government can pay, can, can, you know, necessarily pay for all the teams in the country because this is just football we're talking about. There's rugby, there's basketball clubs, there's all that, even volleyball clubs. The, will the money be enough for all those teams? No, they'll have to get a smaller slice of the cake for them to, you know, to be part of the money that the government will dish out. So, for those in the FKF, you look at our national team, Harambe Stars. You look at all the other national teams that maybe are at the World Cup. They had sponsors. They weren't wearing them during playing, but they're training kids. All of them had sponsors, you know. That's where the money comes from. So, for FKF and the clubs themselves, especially Gormahia, FC Lopez, you know, those clubs, they need to find solid sponsorships first. They need to look out for these sponsors, get them, and stop being overly reliant on, you know, government or people stepping up and coming through for them at the last minute. I think we need to move away completely from that and pump real, real money. Also to the corporates, you know, we need to pump real money into football and make it a, a proper sport because it's the biggest in the world. We cannot excel at athletics, you know, do fairly well at rugby and our football is is, is, is dying, you know. We really need to invest in it. Yeah, because we are not self-sustainable enough. A team like FC Leopards, mm -hmm. you know, it's been there <laughs> since time immemorial. The last time they won a league uh, is several years down the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a team that, you know, has had an opportunity to, you know, uh, contribute immensely to success of Kenyan football, even by the virtue of players who've donned uh, FC Leopard's jersey. Yes. Uh, you know, the late Joe Kadenge, yeah. Kina Simon Mulama, Bonfa Sambani, yeah. you know, the big, list big is names, endless. Big, big names, eh? but, but sometimes it's very embarrassing to see these teams uh, behaving like, you know, begging balls. You know, when they are stranded, they are reaching out to politicians, to our prime CS Msali Amudavad or former defense CS Eugene Wamalo to come to their rescue. That is not long term. It's not long term because we've refused to invest in structures, my mm -hmm. friend. If you look at a, a team that has been able to, to dominate a little bit, uh, 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 to have consistency, look at Tasca. Uh, Tasca has had that consistency. Uh, if you pick 10 years, you'll find that they have been in the top four, four consistently. Mm. Uh, simply because of the structures that are there set by Kenya breweries, uh, East African be, uh, breweries, and uh, the sponsorship is, yeah. uh, is, is consistent. Now, if you look at now these other, I'll put them, they used to be community-based uh, mm. uh, teams, uh, Gorma, FC, Leopards. They are more on individuals rather than offices. They don't want to create structures. And you'll find that when the chairman, who was very powerful, leaves, the team also dwindles, mm. the, uh, goes down, eh? because uh, he was the alpha and the omega. So I, I think uh, we, we need to, 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 to rethink our football. And uh, these teams, as you say, they need to put structures in place. Uh, structures, there is the office of this, and this office, their work is to lobby for, for funds, their work is to, 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 to bring sponsors on board. Uh, we don't have to fundraise, because it's very embarrassing when FC Leopards is fundraising. Uh, in the 21st century, we are doing a fundraiser uh, to pay players' salaries. We are doing a fundraiser to own our, our matches. Eh? Uh, it becomes really embarrassing. Mm -hmm. And that is a wake-up call. Uh, to. And I think also the government should be able to come in, maybe uh, parliamentarians, come up with a law yes. uh, to regulate these teams and say that uh, you, you have to look for sponsors. Mm -hmm. for, you, for you to register, you, you, you have to look for sponsors. And uh, these are the guidelines. Mm -hmm. So these teams, uh, to protect the players' welfare, to protect the welfare of the workers, yeah. and um, eventually it will improve the Kenyan football yeah. in totality. Yeah. And I also feel like they should be quick to accept some deals because, you know, we saw the, the one they did for the, the cup. I don't know what they did with which betting company. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
but I think they got 60 million for three seasons. For three seasons. Yeah. And <laughs> I was looking at it, you break it down, <laughs> it becomes peanuts, peanuts. Yeah, yeah, yes. uh, and that's the lack of uh, now structures, uh, as I say. Yeah. If there was an office of somebody dealing with that, definitely yeah. you'll have a lawyer on that table, you'll yeah. have an accountant on that table, you'll yes. have uh, uh, financial advisors on that table. Yeah. You will study this deal, you will take the deal, you'll go and sit down with it, yeah. and when you come back, you say no things. Yeah. Uh, if it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense. Yes. Uh, because uh, uh, 60 million over three years, it was totaling to around 8K per player. <laughs> per <laughs> there, there, is, there is no indemnity. Exactly. <laughs> and then there's no professionalism. How do you sign such kind of a deal? Actually, actually uh, 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 to, be, to, be, to be honest, to yeah. be frank, uh, because on this particular platform we always candid. Yes. Those, those, those corporates are, are benefiting much more uh, than how you know these clubs are... Uh, getting you know uh, value these for privileges money. Yeah. in exchange for the it's sponsorship just exploitation. signed. It's yeah. exploitation. Yeah, they're exploiting the because the players. you see, when you sign a sponsorship deal with Gormaya, yeah. it's a team that you know draws yeah. overwhelming following yes. Yes, yes, locally, yes, yes, and yes. The, you know whatever you get in return yeah. from the fans who get to support this team yeah. is so huge, yeah. and like what the team is yeah. getting, getting in return. In return. Yeah. So yeah. the team is being used by these corporates uh, and and i'll say it is because of our own stupidity because uh, you see we should put their people uh, who, who can scrutinize you know, package deals. the deals yes, and you know advocate for yeah proper look, sponsorship deals uh, but i think also uh, some of them are looking at what they get in return individually individually mm -hmm. and all the team benefiting wow <laughs> we're gonna close on that of course we've been speaking about state of kenyan football and i think this is something we can talk about the whole year without getting tired because we mean well for Kenyan football and we want it to be juicy and as beautiful as possible so that, you know, at least it can draw fanatical following like what European leagues and, you know, several leagues across the world do. Uh, we take a short commercial break before we return with Matters International Football with focus on fixtures lined up for the weekend. Don't go away. <laughs>